Now all the way live, new row videos, I'm the G-Spot, coming to you all the way live from Los Angeles, California. In the house, I got the Cypress Hill Posse, I got Sen, I got Be Real, they got an album entitled Cypress Hill Posse. You probably got it, and if you don't, you need to get it, if you know what I'm saying. Definitely dope hip-hop coming out of Los. And right now I'm talking to them all the way live. Man, I'm glad you're able to talk to us. In fact, why don't you tell me the message you have in your music? Yo, man, um, I'm glad you can come out, G, man. It's been a long time we've been talking on the phone. Yeah. But uh, I say the, the message we got, man, we like to call it Beerl and myself. We like to call it Funky Awareness, man. Because uh, all the beats is funky, man. Everything is funky on the album. And plus it has a, a clever awareness pitch to it, man. It has a be awareness is toward it's like the mafiosos on the street, you know, what could happen when you out there living that life where you know you out there doing damage to somebody's property or person. And uh, you know, we also have another awareness as far as like our ecology, man, our environmental state that the world is in right now. So we like to talk about all of that, man. Um, it's the, the album is definitely different, like you said, it's entitled Cypress Hill, and that's just the name of the album, you know, so we can make it plain and simple for all the folks out there who might be able to get into our type of swing. Um, you know, it's just a, it's just like raw hip-hop, man, bundled up into a little funky awareness package, man. Yeah. In fact, you're from the South Gate area here in Los Angeles, and right next to Watts and a few other places, is the environment evident in your music? Is that one reason behind why your music is so hardcore and funky hip hop, or it ain't that pop, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, we just go by the things we see day to day and the things our homeboys see, you know, because it's all around us. So, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a type of thing, if, if you could see it through my eyes, you know, for the people who can't understand. So we explain it in our rhymes, you know, explanatory type thing. Yeah. That's yeah. how we do it with, but you know, with our funky styles and the funky music, you know. The funky music. See, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like a feel, like an emotion. It's not just a song or a cut, you know. It's yeah. like a whole big emotion type thing. Yeah. You get into the track and you can feel like what the character in the song is going through, you know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah, because uh, in the beats, real. you ride along with it. And uh, also, one thing I was impressed with is you guys have original beats. You guys don't do all that much sampling. You do a little bit, you know, and it's yeah. there, but it, uh, the beats are original. Is that the responsible, the responsible uh, mix master Muggs? Is he responsible for that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was, because Muggs has always been the type where, man, I don't care how successful an art, a soul record was five, seven years ago, we ain't going to use it, man, just to help us out that much more. You know, the road might be a little bit longer for us to climb but or to get through, but we feel we're definitely going to get through because we're a good group. But um, uh, we use a lot of live bass lines in there. You know, we have our own bass player, our own drummer We came that came down and, and did stuff. We, You know, the sampling sport, and of course we do use samples, but some of the stuff that people ain't going to recognize. We, we're like, we're like really like stuck on being different, music-wise, look-wise, everything. In fact, you do have live instruments in your music. You got a drummer, you got a guitar player and all that? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's important? Does that give it a more fuller sound than maybe just a bass machine, you know, bass drum machine and a sampler? I mean, does it give it that that uh, dimension? Definitely, man. It gives it a, a live sound instead of like the studio sound. Sometimes you need a live bass a guitar in there, a live wire guitar in there, or maybe a, a live cymbal or something like that. Cause your lyrics are always gonna be done live right there on the spot and they're gonna have that fresh feel. Sometimes you're gonna wanna sample a record that doesn't have that, that fresh feel to it. It's gonna have maybe an old feel to it. So we like, we give it to my boy across the street. We, he's a rock and roller, his name is James. We call him James, he's a dope James. He's got a number of females. But we tell him, yo, check this tape yeah. out, man. Why don't you twang with it for a while and come in tomorrow? So he'll check it out and like, uh, he'll play with it on his guitar. And if he likes, you know, he'll, he'll learn it and then he'll do his own little variations of it. He get in the studio and uh, get busy on it. And he lives right over here. He lives across the street, yeah. the rock and roll group across the street. <laughs> so you're working with the community. Yeah, see, yeah. The, you know, the whole thing is not all the cuts are like that. Some of them we want the old feel to it. Yeah. 
You know, not all of them we want the live bass line. So, some of them gotta sound that way, you know? Yeah. Because we're not, we're not the type of group who likes that real clear, clear sound. We like that muddy old type of shit that you could really groove to, like back in the days. You know? Yeah. In fact, who were some of your influences back in the days? Were they the Cameo? The Cameo, the Funk, yeah, the yeah. Larry Blackman. Cameo. We're a diversified bunch, man, because, you know, I grew up, you know, and before I was even into Funk, uh, funk and Parliament and all that, I was listening to heavy metal. Yeah, like, like you know, Van Zeppelin and Zeppelin and Halen, Hendrix. Hendrix, Janis Joplin, the Eagles, the Who, the Pretenders, and everything, man. I was into everything. Right. And Cream, Alice Cooper, and, and the Nugent, and all that. And then later on, you know, we started getting into all of the heavy funk stuff. So it was definitely something that, you know, it was a music thing. Yeah. You know, we, we got the Mellow Man. We got the Mellow Man in the house. right here in the house. And if you don't know him, he's got the single called uh, Mentirosa. He's due to have a new album out soon. When's the release date on that, Mellow? You have to wait and see. This ain't my turn. It's my boys that are getting paid here now. So it's their turn to them for them to shine. Anyway, it'll be out in a couple months. <laughs> so that's the real deal here. Yeah. In fact, um, I want to thank you guys for sitting down and talking to us. In fact, you guys are got one of the best rap styles I've heard. You got that nasal, <laughs> that nasal uh, uh, style, man. I mean, yeah. is that something that you used to rap like, or, or I mean, how'd you come up with that? Well, you know, it just evolved into that eventually. You know? <laughs> Cause it, it's, it's just when my adrenaline gets up, that's how I get. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, why don't you bust a funky acapella and then we'll get to the next video. Yeah, why don't you do right. that funky acapella? Oh. All right, bet. Well, it's the alley cat puffing on a hootie max. I think I'm a criminal, but yo, I ain't all of that. Hit you with the baseball bat when you wanna ill, don't wanna mess around and get fucked by the hill, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right on. New Road Videos. Check it out. Funky Fair One. Not bad.